Lately, I've been inundated with requests for this guy. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lowen University. 88 Fingers Louie, another band name that intrigues me. And upon my research, I'm reading it was based on a Flintstones character who appeared in just one episode, a gangster who sold dodgy pianos on the black market. Love that. But seriously, this has been one of the most consistently requested bands. I even saw this comment that made me laugh that said, I don't even know who this band is, but you have to do them. So we're getting to 100 Proof today, which has been unanimously requested. And that's from their second studio album, Back on the Streets, released in 1998, just two years after they disbanded. And this is sort of a rebound record I'm reading. Giving it one more shot, they released this album and disbanded shortly after that. And then Joe quickly pivoted to form Rise Against. Would love to check them out as well. But the band was just simply riddled with some internal strife. But I guess this album and this song were so great, we're requesting it all these years later. So without further ado, let's get to it. 100 Proof by 88 Fingers Louie. Kind of epic. That's a that's a super hi-fi bass sound. You know, a lot of bass tones are just clean, simple. They're very just kind of one-dimensional. And that's always, that's a great thing. You don't need a lot of nuance for a bass tone. But when they are, it just sounds so big and wide. Like, this is such a stereo-sounding part. And, of course, he's playing some chordal stuff up there. We're in D minor. D-ish. Let's see. That's super cool. Going from D minor down to B flat major, kind of like flat six, seven, one kind of thing. B flat major, C major, let's see. Yeah. Obviously, using a pick, and I saw some comments that saying Fat Mike had a lot of success using a 0.6 pick, a little thinner. I've always liked thinner picks, so I'm going to try to use that for today's video. But that tone is so crisp. I mean, I love that you can hear, you know, unlike the Dead Kennedys video I did where the bass intro was playing something kind of similar, actually, just chordal notes, multiple notes on bass here in this lower register. And I could hear the separation, but that's, a, that's of course, a much older recording. But I love when you can hear bass chords and every note is very separated. Just gives for that rich surround sound kind of thing. This has a real epic feel, too. Okay, right here, there's something kind of squirrely going on that's, it kind of makes the whole chord progression sound upside down in a way that I think the bass is kind of inverting these chords. So if you listen to this guitar part, the bass notes are changing under it and it sounds like the guitar stays the same, which goes to show you that bass players completely control the chord. You know, if a guitar or a keyboardist is playing C and you come in and play a G or an E or a D, you're completely changing the whole tonality of the chord. That's just the power of this instrument. You can hear that on display right here. Yeah, bass is going between D. Sounds like the guitar is hanging on one of those notes a little longer, but it's creating sort of an, sort of an inversion. And you kind of hear that rub, which is really cool because the intro was really just diatonic, epic, big minor kind of halftime thing with that bass part. Cool song. Let's keep going. Cool. 
Right there. So they join in unison on that F. And then the guitar did a first inversion in the C major. So we put the E in the bass. You got C root, just root third, C E. Put the E in the bass. I think that's the sound I'm hearing. And then the bass came up and kind of reprised that part from the intro. So you got that really stackable C major sound with that E in the bass on the guitar. They're kind of in the same range here, fighting for that same frequency space. And then it sounds like the bass inverted it again, went back up to like a, let's see. Right there. Super cool. They have not lost that kind of gallopy rhythm this whole whole song. Dun dun dega dega dun 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 dega dun 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 dega dega dun dega dega dun dun dega dega dun dun dega dega. Even when it stopped there for that bass break, Joe, bass player, kept that pulse going, and they have not lost that momentum. There's been no like everything kind of falls out for a dynamic thing. Even when it gets dynamic, just with this bass part, keeps that keeps that pulse going right here. Cool. That's such a cool intro. Inversion. Takes up to the fifth there, so it just sounds like open D string to A. Really awesome. You can keep those low pedal kind of notes. If you're, you know, if, if the song happens to be in the key of one of your open strings, it's a great opportunity to ring out one of those open strings, whether it's E string, A string, D string. You can create those kind of intervals and chords. And it's a way essentially to go higher up on the bass range. You know, we're way up here. And not lose that bottom end because you still have this kind of going underneath it. And that's kind of what he's doing here. And that's why he, it doesn't lose that fullness in the bass part. But you can still hear him kind of dancing around in those top notes. Great, great writing as far as just having a good full bass part. Same rhythm. Dun, dun, da, da, gun, da, 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 da. Has not changed. Got to hear that before the song wraps up. I couldn't tell if it was just the bass line was changing. It's kind of like a bass solo that had just as much fervor and zing as any bass solo, but it was done like really musical in a sense where it kind of, it didn't break away from the song, the song's progression or the song's kind of vibe. That's a tough thing to pull off when you do a bass feature like that. And it sounds like it's part of the actual song. It's not like on top of the song as a feature. And I think what makes that possible is the fact that this bass part has been busy from note one. It's had a good mix of low notes and high notes, often at the same time. So it's like when he transitions into 
a bass solo, I guess, here. It doesn't really sound like a solo because it's characteristic of everything that's already happened before it. That makes for a cool song. Bass, y'all. Can't get enough of it. I got to hear it again, though. And it's kind of interesting. They actually went lower for that part because bass has been really up here. Let's see. Going lower here. Yeah. Those that those phrasings are catchy. Again, it's so cool that he kind of took this bass feature. It's kind of like the first real bass line of the song. It's been very chordal more melodic kind of going with the guitar part and giving that guitar part more energy. But I love that it kind of has like a dun, 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 dun. has some nice groovy phrasing in there. Nice. And it's, Again, the chord progression's been very repetitive. And that's, you know, if you can have enough dimension to just a kind of a three chord progression here, D minor, B flat, C, they go down to the F, the G, they have the five every now and then on the A major, which resolves nicely to D minor. So cool songwriting. For some reason, I wasn't expecting that much of a polished sound. I know, I know I say that word a lot. I'm just referring to the production, and it's a good thing because I can hear all the nuances of what's going on. I mean, just great mix, great bass tone, very hi-fi, had the perfect amount of top-end presence and sizzle. All the nuance and articulations he did were just crystal clear. And I think the thing I'm most enamored with is that bass solo. I can tell it's a bass solo because it's just a, it was a deviation from the normal part. And, you know, you, you could honestly not really tell when the solo stopped or when it started because the whole song was kind of a bass solo. And I see why you guys recommended this. Great playing. I love all the chordal work going on. You know, I, I said a second ago that it's been a simple chord progression the whole song. Just kind of really one, six, seven, one in D minor. There's some other chords in there around that chorus part. But the fact that they played around with the inversion so much almost gave it a lot more depth than just that three chord progression. It almost sounded like there was more chords happening than there really were. And I think that was all in part to Joe's weaving in and out of the chords, kind of changing the root notes or kind of fighting against them in the guitar part. That's some cool orchestration stuff. And if I were to give a piece of advice on a bass line like this, I've heard it the first time, but use the power of your instrument. If you're a bass player, you got a four chord progression, change one of the root notes to something else. You know, maybe take a note from another chord in a D minor, like the F, or go to the A. You can do the first inversion or the fifth. But it's just showcasing the power of what you can do with this. And I love hearing that on display on songs like this. So thank you guys for requesting 100 Proof by 88 Fingers Louie. I appreciate your patience. This has been so consistently requested. But please like the video. Subscribe. Come find me on Patreon for much more content, lessons, licks, all that good stuff. And don't forget to let me know what I should check out for Rise Against. I'm curious if those, those songs from that band have that same energy or bass kind of involvement as this one did. This was really surprising, really epic song. And um, thank you guys for hanging out with me as always. I love you all. Cheers. We'll see you next time.